Nancy, can I, can I get you. some stock trading tips on how to get Thank semiconductors you. in Thank Taiwan? You. Thank you. Nancy, Thank you. Nancy, why do we? Thank is your son involved with Hunter Biden? Thank you for what you're doing. Nancy. Yeah. Hi. Uh, prison time's coming soon. Be ready. Donald Trump. What's up guys, it's your boy Benny. History doesn't repeat itself, but it certainly rhymes, especially with Marxists and communists. Now, Joseph Stalin is an interesting Marxist figure, probably the most famous Marxist and communist that ever lived. Joseph Stalin, of course, purged his entire nation and it's called the Red Purge, sent a bunch of his own countrymen to gulags, but he started with the people who were closest to him. He began with the people in power that helped him build a police state in the Soviet Union. Joseph Stalin purged the communist leaders who helped build him up and bring him up, sent them all to prison, sent them all to gulags, had them all executed. They were the first to go. So it should tell you a little story about the people who are trying to build a police state in this country that they are not immune to it. And that in fact, they will become the first victims of it because that's just how power works, you see. Nancy Pelosi is a person who is, of course, loved the police state. She celebrated January 6th, saying that she's so excited for trespassing at the Capitol, almost as though it was all planned. Nancy Pelosi has lavished and taken great evil joy in the fact that innocent Americans have been locked up in pretrial solitary confinement for years and are getting decades long prison sentences for simply walking through the Capitol peacefully. Nancy Pelosi, of course, knelt to BLM on the same place, in the same location, in the Capitol building. She kneeled down on one knee and groveled to Black Lives Matter, who was at the very same time burning and torching Washington, D.C. ground. And so Nancy Pelosi is a person who lives in deep and utter delusion and believes that the st police state tactics that she is creating for the rest of us won't ever be turned around and used on her. That's why it's particularly interesting and newsworthy that Nancy Pelosi was served a subpoena on the House floor and had the House floor clerk go read the subpoena for her in a criminal case. Now, what criminal case is this? This is extremely mysterious. And why does Nancy Pelosi feel like she needs to uh, tell everyone this right now? Why did this happen on the House floor? Who was able to get a subpoena to the House floor? One of the more secure places in all of America. This is a great question. Listen to this. Formerly, pursuant to Rule 8 of the Rules of the House of Representatives, that I, the Honorable Nancy Pelosi, Speaker Emerita and U.S. Representative for the 11th Congressional District of California, have been served with third-party subpoenas from the prosecution and the defendant to produce documents in a criminal case in the United States District Court for the Northern District of California. After consultation with the Office of General Counsel, I have determined that compliance with the subpoenas is consistent with the privileges and rights of the House to the extent it requires. What the hell is this about? What? F so this is a federal case in California, in her district, and she had to be hit with a subpoena on the House floor and then had to tell the entire House floor that she needs to give documents for a criminal case. Uh, what case? What is happening here? Uh, Jesse Waters. Oh, Nancy Pelosi's being subpoenaed in a criminal case. Yeah. What criminal case? That person who isn't Nancy Pelosi wouldn't say. Could it be related to the hammer attack on her husband, Paulie P? Because that trial starts next week. Does it have something to do with her husband's DUI? Or is there something behind door number three? Maybe a little insider trading. The son's shady business dealings. We don't know. We asked Pelosi's office to explain. They said no comment. But subpoenas aren't nothing, especially in a criminal case. It suggests there's something Nancy does not want to hand over voluntarily. You don't subpoena the willing. Yeah, you don't subpoena the willing. This from the Daily Mail. Pelosi announces on the House floor that she served with a subpoena related to a case where her husband was assaulted by a hammer-wielding invader. So the Daily Mail is saying that this has to do with the violent hammer attack against Paul Pelosi uh, a month after Paul Pelosi was nipped for drunk driving and driving under the influence. And who knows what else was in his system? What a shady, shady family. Nancy Pelosi is in her mid 80s. She's 83. She made the announcement to produce documents in a criminal case and says she's going to cooperate. 
Source said the subpoena was related to a violent attack against her husband, Paul Pelosi, by the home invader last year. It's not clear whether the former Democrat speaker will need to testify. So this is totally crazy. What is the criminal case? Well, that's set to begin again next week. We'll remind you that this is the footage, right, from the cops that night that shows a befuddled, bewildered, clearly confused Paul Pelosi in his underwear. Come on, man. Everything's good. Hi. Drop the hammer. Um, nope. Hey, 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 hey. What is going on right now? Okay, and then something horrible happens to Paul Pelosi. Now, the lead up to this that we know from the security footage is that that individual who is a, according to his own family, a Democrat, uh, broke into their house, used that same hammer to break into the Pelosi house, and then was working, like, was talking and communicating with Paul Pelosi and was sort of like, like working through things with Paul Pelosi. Like, they had like an hour in the house together uh, before this footage is here. Like, Paul Pelosi said he's going to call people. Paul Pelosi t- t- told, told the 911 operator, called him by his name, said he was a friend. This is according to the 911 tapes. Maybe he was just under duress. Obviously, Paul Pelosi got really badly hurt there. Okay. And we don't want that for anyone. Of course, it shouldn't happen. It's awful. Uh, and the guy is going to be, the guy has been criminally charged. But it, There are many, many questions about like this entire video, like in this scenario, why isn't Paul Pelosi sprinting? Why is Paul Pelosi holding the hammer? Why isn't he sprinting away into the arms of the police officers for safety? Why doesn't Paul Pelosi immediately declare an emergency to the cops? Have you ever watched the show Cops? When the cops show up to your doorstep, you're like, there's a horrible emergency. Please help, help. Look here, help. There's the intruder. It doesn't make any sense. Maybe the guy was, I mean, trying to, Stay, keep his cool. Maybe the guy was on, uh, un, uh, you know, under the influence. To do the breathalyzer test. We have this footage of Paul Pelosi's arrest, where a very slurry, drunk Paul Pelosi, just months earlier, You're involved in a crash. smashed in and nearly killed a man. I can see you're very unsteady on your feet. And when Paulie realized things weren't really going his way, he pulled a. Do you know who I am? Paul Pelosi trying to get out, trying to. I'm a high-profile person. Wait, wait, wait. Can we hear that one more time? And then this time, keep it rolling? <laughs> right, no, I, I understand who you are. And I'm not, I'm not here to try to, to do anything uh, to okay, we'll do. draw any negative attention to you. Um, if you've been honest with me, there's really nothing that you should be worried about in terms of the alcohol you consume. Have you been honest with me about your consumption being only two two glasses of, of, of alcohol? Yeah, but the police, to their credit, didn't really buy his excuses, that, and he had had a couple. So Paul Pelosi has, of course, a mugshot, has, of course, then has to plead guilty and did plead guilty to drunk driving and reckless endangerment, and uh, again, crashed into the car of a migrant worker in California uh, and and really hurt the guy. Like, could have really killed, could have killed him. Paul Pelosi was, at the very least, blackout drunk, slurring and unable to pass sobriety tests. Uh, this is the man, Paul DePape, who w- broke into Pelosi's house last year. And uh, DePape was, you know, I mean, listen, it, you know, they, they say he's a, he's a crazy person. Um, but here he is also with to pay pictures with the with a bride at a wedding, some naked some naked wedding it looks like. Yikes. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Uh, all right. To Pape's kids. Here's the place where DePape broke into the Pelosi's house. To Pape's kids um say that he's a Democrat. And that he's a lifelong Democrat. And that he supported the Pelosi's. So I I you know. So it's, the entire thing is very confusing. Paul Pelosi have been released, sort of. We can't see it yet, but prosecutors played both tapes in court yesterday during Hammerman David DePape's preliminary hearing. According to reports from the courtroom, the body cam footage shows belief they stood five feet away as DePape and Pelosi struggled for the hammer. 
and only tackled the pape after he'd already hit Pelosi in the head. But we still don't know who opened the door. Was it Paul? Was it the cops? Did they not play that part of the footage in the courtroom? Why is this such a simple detail so hard to pin down? We also learned who else was on DePape's hit list, Gavin Newsom, Hunter Biden, and Tom Hanks. How does anybody hate Tom Hanks? That's how I know the guy's crazy. He wanted to take down Tom. Meanwhile, DePape's son is speaking out. Sky Gonzalez, yeah, he goes by the name Sky, told the DailyMail.com that his dad wasn't a right-wing radical after all. Sky said, my father had progressive views. He was a peace activist, hardly a right-wing conservative. There you go. There you go. This is, how the, this is how the fake news works. People asking questions. What is the criminal case? And if you have to subpoena somebody, that means they're not willing to give the documents willingly. That means some something foul is a play. If you have to subpoena someone, that means you are forcing them to hand over the documents. Nancy Pelosi's drink driver husband, Paul, Blasted for buying $5 billion of shares of semiconductor firm before Congress voted to pass $5.2 billion chip manufacturers. So is this potentially related to insider trading? As the Pelosi's have often done, how did the Pelosi's get hundreds of millions of dollars worth of family fortune when they both came from effectively nothing? Hmm. Yeah. And why are the Pelosi family friends turning on them? There have been multiple articles written about how Paul Pelosi is a sort of degenerate and how Nancy Pelosi hates him and how they have, like, it's always these people with these like broken, broken ass, uh, destructive personal lives who seek the power because they can't control anything else. So they want to control you. So Nancy Pelosi getting subpoenaed in a criminal case in California. You don't subpoena the willing. Something's amiss here. Something's up. Something's wrong. Now you'll recall that the reporter, if, if you remember this, and this is this story is from almost a year ago when we were doing big reporting on this, the reporter, the local reporter who actually dug into the Pelosi's and asked real questions about like who was opening the door and why was this man inside of the house and did the two know each other? This reporter this local news reporter in San Francisco, this guy was deep sixed to Alaska. This guy got, Pelosi got this guy fired effectively from his job for doing real reporting on this story. This is how scared the Pelosi's are about this hammer time situation. Again, don't want anyone to get hurt. Upset. Uh, we, we want everyone to live peaceful, happy lives. But the Pelosi's clearly got this reporter, Miguel Aguilar is his name, uh, uh, taken off the beat and like banished because he actually asked real questions about this report. Watch. Craig, good morning. When officers arrived here at the Pelosi home exactly a week ago today, they initially didn't have any idea exactly what was going on. They knew they had a high priority call on their hand. What was unclear, what was happening inside the property just behind me. This morning, Paul Pelosi is home, back at the house that became a crime scene a week ago today. NBC News learning new details about the moments police arrived. Sources familiar with what unfolded in the Pelosi residence now revealing when officers responded to the high priority call, they were seemingly unaware they'd been called to the home of the Speaker of the House. After a knock and announce, the front door was opened by Mr. Pelosi. The 82-year-old did not immediately declare an emergency or tried to leave his home, but instead began walking several feet back into the foyer toward the assailant and away from police. It's unclear if the 82-year-old was already injured or what his mental state was, say sources. According to court documents, when the officer asked what was going on, defendant smiled and said everything's good. But instantaneously, a struggle ensued as police clearly saw David DePap strike Paul Pelosi in the head with a hammer. After tackling the suspect, officers rushed to Mr. Pelosi, who was lying in a pool of blood. What we do know 
is he brutally attacked Mr. Pelosi and attempted to kill him. After spending several days in the ICU, Pelosi, who is recovering from a fractured skull and serious injuries to his arm and hand, is now home where Capitol Police remain on alert. Investigators have previously said Pelosi did not know DePap when the 42-year-old broke into his home. Why Pelosi didn't try to flee or tell responding officers he was in distress is unclear. Fear takes over. Fear freezes people. This morning, the 82-year-old lucky to be alive after an intruder nearly killed him in his own home. Law enforcement, tell, law enforcement officials tell us the bottom line here is this was a terrifying situation. We still don't know exactly what unfolded between Mr. Pelosi and the suspect for the 30 minutes they were alone inside that house before police arrived. Officials who were investigating this matter would not go into further details about these new details. Craig, back to you. Yeah, one thing's for sure, though. He is lucky to be alive. Miguel Amelgar for us. Miguel, thank you.